what is referred to as the ugly duckling, but as we know, looks can be deceiving. But this particular pacer during the early to mid 70s was one of the star attractions and boy could he motor on any track, anywhere, over any distance. The horse in question is Manaroa. I'm joined by his trainer driver, Neville Hargraves. Well, Nev, it's great to catch up with you to talk about such a wonderful performer in Manaroa. But as I said in the introduction, he was referred to the ugly duckling, but he did have a motor. He had a big motor. And he, he weren't ugly to me. He was quite pretty. That's all right. Why was he tagged the ugly duckling? Well, he was a very, he was about 16 one, very tall horse, but very short. He didn't carry a very long hobble, very short hole, right? Because he was very short. That's why he looked ugly and he had no tail. But if you cut him up in sections, he was a beautiful horse. Nev, let's have a look at his brilliant career. 1971, he finished last behind Mount Eden in the Miracle Mile. Of course, one of the great Miracle Miles due to the performance of Mount Eden. But in 1972, he was back and finished a very solid third behind Reichman. Yeah, well, he sort of uh, locked away on the fence. He drew one when I drove him. And I think Reichman won that race. And uh, I just caught, couldn't get a run at all. You know, I'm not saying he would have beat Reichman, but he would have been a lot closer. Yeah, that was 1973, sensationally, yeah, sensationally backed on that particular occasion to win the race. Oh, was he? Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I wasn't a punter myself. <laughs> but some of the owners were, they were big punters. Yeah. 1972, of course, Bay Foyle, he finished third in that particular one. Charlie Parsons, of course, training Bay Foyle. Yeah, well, they only walked, they only went about 59, so, so not many horses behind had a chance. Charlie Parsons led and done. He's a brilliant driver, brilliant trainer, you know. He started favourite on that particular occasion. Alan Harrison drove for the trainer with Colin McLaughlin. Yeah, well, that was, his, that was his stepson, Alan Harrison, you know. But uh, he used to sort of stay with uh, Royal Ascot, and I stayed with Menorah, because I got on good with Menorah, and he, and he liked Royal Ascot. The 1972 Dominion Carnival won by Welcome Advice at Albion Park. Understand start conditions. Went through the heats undefeated. Yeah, well, he did. He did, but he came off 24 yards and he got skittled early. But he got the backwash of any trouble, and you know what big finals are like. You know, it was dog eat dog, and it was only a mile and a half, and sort of, he done a great job. Yeah, he finished fifth on that particular occasion, as you said, off the 24-yard handicap. What made him such a special horse? Well, I don't know, because maybe because he, he, he probably was an ugly horse. And people, when I used to go out on the track, just warming him up, the crowd used to just clap him and clap him and clap him off the track, clap him on the track. And, and at Harold Park, a lot of times he weren't on the bedding, he weren't on the bookmaker things, right? So you couldn't back him, everyone had a bet in the race that he was racing in, you had to back something else. Yeah. So how did you get Manaroa, Neville? Well, I was in New Zealand and they had to tow him off the track with the tractor because he was a rogue. So I went down and had a look at him and uh, I started to laugh and the old fellow who owned him, he said, you can laugh, everyone laughs at him. I said, I like him. I said, cut him up into sections, he's a lovely horse. And he said, if you like him that much, I'll send him to you. So that's how I got him. And we first, he landed in Australia, and the uh, first driver ever sat on him, never worked him in track work or nothing. And I jumped on him in the uh, Lord Mayor's Cup of 24 yards, and he won the Lord Mayor's Cup by at least 24 yards. You think that's what made him such a special horse with the uh, public, the fact that he was overcoming these daunting handicaps? Well, it was, yeah, because he even won off uh, 36 yards over 11 furlongs at Havel Park against top class horses. You know, so he was a special horse. And that was a period, Neville, where there was no, let's say, easy kills because you were always racing against the best and you were driving and training against the best. Oh, yeah, we blokes like Jimmy Caffin and Laurie Moles and, and Kevin Robertson, all them fellas, like, uh, I, could, I can name dozens of them, you know, and J.D. Watts, all brilliant horsemen, you know. But they taught us. They taught us. They taught us what to do. They taught us how to drive. It was referred to as the golden period of harness racing through the 60s and 70s into the 80s, and rightly so. Oh, of course. Brilliant horse. They were all great horsemen. They grew up with horses. A whole lot of them. You know, Percy Hall and all them fellas. And how did your career commence? Well, like my career commenced when my father had a horse, a couple of horses he couldn't hold, and I was only young, I think I was smarty, 
I said, oh, anyone can hold the horse. So get in the get in the cart, smarty. So I got in. Never pulled. No horses ever pulled for me. So that's how I started to drive. That was the Fairfield Trials, and you were virtually driving at Harold. Uh, that was before that. I drove once. So I went to Fairfield Trials. I am standing there, and I said, oh, anyone can do that. My father said, Sid Lincoln was walking past. She said, you got a set of colours? He said, yep. Filmed with my father. He said, here, smarty. Get in the cart and drive that horse. So I did. A horse call, I think it was, it was called Bruce Machine, and uh, I got beat ahead. That was on the Sunday. I went down on the Monday and got my licence over the over the counter at Harold Park. It used to be run by the committee them days. And uh, I went to Hawkesby on the Thursday. I think it was a Thursday. It was a half mile track them days. And Les Chant beat me ahead in the free for all. But the horse took me. I didn't take the horse. So that's how I started. And I never got out of the cart since. You were a relative late bloomer because it was 20 years of age when you started that. You were in the brick carting business. Oh, yeah, I was, cart I was a brick carter. I used to do three 2,000 loads by hand, on and off. Oh, yeah. It wasn't easy in them days. So when you started to develop your career, how many horses would you have? Well, I, I, I started off only a couple, and they just kept on growing and growing, you know. And I ended up, I used to limit myself no more than 15. I liked 12 because I used to do a lot of travelling in the state, you know. So, and uh, you can't work too many. You've got to be on the job. You've got to be there. And who was the greatest influences on your career? Oh, Jimmy Caffin, Kevin Robertson, Purcell, all of them. Lowy Moles, all brilliant horsemen. I used to suck their brains. I used to ask them that many questions after the race. I must have drove them mad. But they was all pretty good to me. And in those races, never you speak of driving against such greats, there was no quarter asked, no quarter given. Oh, yeah. All they gave you was standing room, all right? If you've done something wrong, they give you the biggest gob for you know? I was at Harold Park there one night. We, we backed the horse from 66 to twos, right? And I couldn't get out. And Jimmy Caffin's outside me. Anyway, as, just before I straightened up, I sort of got to come out, Mr. Caffin. And, and he, anyway, I went bang. Gave Jimmy out and I went through and I won the race because they gave me a month. And I went and apologised to him. He said, don't apologise to me, son, he said. He said, I'd do the same thing to you. <laughs> you know, that was Jimmy Caffin. Brilliant man. And if, apart from Metaroa, are other horses very close to your heart? Oh, yeah, Frisco Frost was a great horse. I took him to South Australia and won the Winfield Cup with him. And with Panton Leisure, she was a brilliant two-year-old, three-year-old filly. She was about as good as there was in the in Australia at the time. You know, I can go through a hoop and like courtesy Tedlo, went about seven records in a row, yeah, brilliant. You know, I can I forget half of them. As long as you don't forget Manaroa. How can I? <laughs> How can I? <laughs> well Neville, it's been great catching up with you. Just a few horses now you look after? I uh, yes, I got uh Ryderman here, I own him. Uh, well my daughter does and I got another one out of the same mare, mankind, he qualified here a couple of weeks back two-year-old is a if and I've got another filly in that I think that'll do me two horses are enough for me now <laughs> well never we're doing this interview where they honor the legends of harness racing Manaroa certainly one of the legends of harness racing I think he is too I think he is I haven't seen anyone better <laughs> well, it's been great to catch up with you Neville. have a little trip down memory lane thank you very much